And now he is 3-1 and one as a professional, and he's kind enough to be joining us right now. One of the best fights on that card. There he is, our old pal AJ Agazarm, who once upon a time announced that he'd be coming over to uh, Bellator on our program in another studio. AJ, how are you? Hey, Ariel. It's going really well. Congratulations. Would you say, um, I, I know you're still in the embryonic stages of your mixed martial arts career, but would you say that was your, your best win to date? Best win to date. <laughs> it was the most exciting win. Okay. Yeah. It was interesting. You don't agree with the best win to date hit. statement? Well, you know what? It, it was the best win, actually. You're right, because it ended in my patented... Um, move so i was stoked about that well yes uh i i did call it a uh, a triangle choke uh did i make a mistake there should i have called it something else yeah it's not a triangle choke and i don't know how it's supposed to how that works with the commission or anything like that but it's not a triangle choke it's um i coined it as the agas arm it's um it's it's a little bit different than a, a triangle so can you explain it the difference choking out yeah, I'm using I'm using the heel of my foot to um, to compress against his carotid artery so that it cuts off the circulation to his head, as opposed to a traditional triangle when I shoot my legs through, and I'm using my legs to to do it. I'm using my heel, um, and it actually it sets up from an armbar. So you saw I started with the Kimura trap in the beginning because he uh, decided that he was going to try to wrestle me, which was was kind of cool. Um, he took a shot after getting getting pieced up in the face a little bit on the feet and then he took a shot and then i trapped him with the kimura and then transitioned from the kimura to the arm bar and then the arm bar to the agas arm is the actual name of that move and um so i don't know i don't know how the commission works or anything like that but that's how it should read on like wikipedia and things it's, that would not, be nice. it's not a triangle joke that would be nice if it said submission Agazarm in brackets. And the he, by the way, is Adele Altamimi, who you defeated um, in that fight in the third round, 122 of the third round. It didn't start off particularly well for you. What were you thinking in the early goings of that fight, and how were you able to stay composed to turn it around? Um, well, he, he's, a very, he's a very skilled striker, and I knew that going into that. Not only is he a skilled striker, but he's... Um, He's a skilled MMA fighter. He has 14 professional fights, um, so that was that was something that I was up against and had to kind of navigate through and and figure my way out. Um, took a little bit more damage than I anticipated before I could get to to my good stuff. But the most feared aspect in all of MMA is is my strong suit, and um, I think it, it showed there. It showed there on Saturday. What do you prefer, a fight like that where, you know, you say that you took a little more damage than you wanted, or your last fight, which I think you received a little bit of criticism for, saying that, you know, the fight wasn't all that exciting or whatnot. This one was exciting. They don't give out fight of the nights and all that stuff, but this one would be considered, I think, if Bellator did do that. Which which kind of fight do you prefer? Why do you think Bellator doesn't give fight of the night performances? That's a good question. Um, maybe they want to not copy the UFC, it's not really their thing. Have you ever asked Scott Coker this? I've never asked him, but I've always thought about it. I'm like, well, to incentivize the fighters and the promotion or for the fight card, it makes sense, you know? That's something that, if I knew that there was a price tag for, even if it, they don't want to go as extreme as saying, you know, matching the, the UFC's $50,000, there should be some sort of incentive for fighters to say, you know, hey, who out of all the fighters on this card, whoever has the most exciting performance or whoever has the most stellar submission or... You know, just like they do with with the other promotions, is going to get incentivized to do that. And I know that they're we're already incentivized to to win, but you want to stand out from from the other guys on the card. And I'm I'm always looking at those guys on on any card that I'm at, whether it's a jujitsu match or or a fight. I want to make sure that I'm outperforming everyone else on on that card. And um, I, I think it would be nice to be incentivized for that. Another fighter who's a proud member of the uh, the Nick Diaz army is is uh, Chris Avila, who also fought on that card and and lost a controversial decision a couple fights before yours. Did you feel pressure to kind of get the team back on track after that decision? Did you feel like you had to get a W after he was, you know, arguably robbed of one? Yeah, I couldn't believe how much that his, I I was able to watch a little bit. The, the TV kept shorting in and out of our our, our locker room, so I. 
hopped over to the other room real quick and watched it. But when I watched, all I saw was the dude running away. And then next thing I know, the other dude, he's getting his hand raised. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense from what I saw. Chris was, he had him in submission attempt after submission attempt, was hitting him up, was kicking him. And it was really, it was surprising to see that. Um, but as far as, as far as it distracting me, you know, I, we're in this together. So it's, it, uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't really, didn't really have that effect. I think it was just, okay, well, he's done now. I'm going to be up in a couple more. I think that's the, that's the most difficult thing that you deal with when you're fighting with teammates on a card is to know, okay, the coaching staff is going to attend, is, is going to tend to them for, for a moment and then they're going to come back and how long do we have in between that? Sometimes the fights are going quick so you don't know if this guy's going to get a submission or he's going to get in the knockout or if it's going to go all 15 minutes. Um, so you, time management is something you really have to work on um, as a fighter. Fortunately, I've had been able to do that in jiu-jitsu for so, so many years. Now it's just reapplying it to the world of MMA and um, with something as, as high stakes as possibly getting knocked out, yeah, there's there's some pressure there. There is some, you know, anxiety that you, you can easily get faced with. Um, fortunately, I have have the you know the, the the staff that we have is Nate was backstage, Ernie Ray is junior, Richard Perez and and Randy Spence, and it's it's difficult to to feel sort of, you know, when you're when you're in uh you're in their presence and you just kind of spills over. So now three straight wins in Bellator after the uh, the disappointing debut. Do you want to take a step up? Do you feel like you've earned a step up in competition? Do you want to be considered among you know some of their rising stars at 145? Do you want a big name opponent? What do you want next, AJ? I've never, I, I never really, um, I've never was really known for for shying away from a challenge. I, I want to fight the best guys, and I don't think that I, I I need to you know pay my dues so to speak in in order to do that. I. I'm a world champion in, in the most the most coveted aspect of the game. And it's the most feared aspect of the game. And unlike striking where, you know, you see that you see a big difference significantly in my, my approach to striking uh, but this year versus um versus my last fight. And I think that given that I'm I'm right up there with there to you know, to take on the best guys and I wanna fight the best guys. I wanna fight I want to be a world champion in Bellator, so I don't think that there's any reason that I shouldn't be fighting the best guys right now. Um, I just I don't know who Bellator wants to protect or who they want to you know who, who doesn't. People say that they want it, but they don't really want it. Like look at Gallagher. I was willing I was willing to step in on the two day notice to face him because they're pumping him up and making him seem like he's a world beater. Well, if if you think he's world championship caliber, let me let me submit him. That would be fun. I mean, not the submission part, but the actual fight. Yeah, I just I, like I said, I think I think my aspect of the game is is the most feared because it takes the longest to 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 obtain. It's a skill set that it's, it's really difficult to to kind of find its way. If you look at my opponent, he's a black belt in jujitsu, and he went for a submission attempt on me with an armbar, but little did he know, I actually gave him that armbar so that I could end up on top. Um, and then when I got to my submission, it was, it was like, the, it was game over. So there's, there's a different caliber there. And I, I think that, you know, I, I don't think that I have just the best grappling, the best jujitsu in my division. I think it have, I have the best grappling jujitsu in the entire league. And I, I deserve to be fighting the best, the best guys with that, with that skill set because it's, nobody knows that nobody knows what to do with it. I'm still, you know, of course, I'm I'm still navigating through the striking, and I'm fortunate to be up with the 209 guys and up in Stockton at the Nick Diaz Academy to learn that. Um, but that that's just gonna that's just a matter of time before I, I start to make it more fluid. And uh, with the coaching staff that we have, it's it's inevitable. I just uh, I want to I want to continue to test myself. But somebody made a comment about facing um, one of the dudes that called me out. And I'm like, how did he win? He won't want to be a triangle. I'm like, well, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to impress. Uh, if I wanted to just go against other grapplers or go against other jujitsu guys, I would just stick with jujitsu. I want to challenge myself against the best guys. I want to challenge myself against the best strikers. And 
you know, this guy was, he had 14 fights. He had, um, you know, he had been in Bellator before and uh, he was a black belt in, in Taekwondo. So he's, he posed a serious threat. And I think that was what was part of the reason that made it so exciting because I had to kind of navigate through it and, and get to my own, my own strong suit, which was the jujitsu. And I put my own spin on it, which was cool. It's a, it's you a great fight. Your whole career to get to that. Yeah, it's a great fight. If anyone missed it on the prelim Saturday, I suggest checking it out. You you mentioned uh, those those famous brothers from Stockton, California. The last time I actually saw you and spoke to you at length was in New York prior to the uh, Nick Diaz interview that we conducted um, right after UFC 244. Could you give us an update on where we're at with Nick? Uh, we haven't heard much, you know, as far as his status since that interview. And I know you kind of serve as maybe a, a, a consultant or a manager for him. Is he going to fight in 2020? I know Nick right now is, is focused on his, uh, the business side of things, and um, that's been that's been a, a major focus for him. So he's 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 dealing with everything that that comes with that, and he's also you know he just had two guys that fought on the Bellator card. That was a big you know that was a that was a big step, and it was in the beginning of the year. So we're all going to regroup and, and get back and, and and look at what we're going to do going forward. Um, all I know is that 2020 is going to be a big year for the Nick Diaz army. And it's, um, it's tough because, you know, these guys, they say like, Oh, I want to, you know, I want to fight so-and-so. I want to fight so-and-so. I'm like, well, you, you certainly don't want to fight anyone from our team because when you're fighting one person from our team, we bring a whole entire army. And, and that's what you saw at the Bellator. Is like we, we mobbed in there with like 15, 20 guys. And, um, you, when you take on one of us, you don't, you don't, just you don't just take on one you take on all of us and um, that's that's the best part and i think nick really represents that and he knows how to cultivate it and bring everybody together and nate nate as well ha they're, they're the ogs of the ogs have there been serious talks with the ufc about his return since since the interview since those comments um you'd have to ask nick i know that you know they were trying to do that mass fit all fight um It, it it really would be up to uh, yeah, you'd have to ask him. Okay. I, what do you th I think I I think from a fan's perspective, from, from just an outsider looking in, if, if I'm unbiased, what 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 I want to see, yeah, I I, I would want to see Masvidal against one of the Diaz brothers. I but you know in my in the forefront of my head, I'm just like uh, Nate kind of got jibbed on that on that on that call to to end the fight. So. There's talks about Connor fighting him, and I'm like, why? He already beat him up twice, and Connor really doesn't want that fight. Nate would, Nate would, uh, Nate's an endurance type athlete, just like myself. Like, you see, my last fight uh, against this guy, he he came out really strong in the first and in the, the beginning half of the second, but the the test of of the of the fight was when he started to get pieced up, his conditioning started to diminish, um, and and my triathlon numbers are in my endurance level, my stamina level that that's conditioned over time, just like the Diaz brothers. We have the same triathlon coach, you know, uh, Damien Gonzalez of Cranked Energy. He 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 brings us to a, a completely different stratosphere in terms of uh, operating at a high endurance. And these guys can't keep up. That's why you saw the guy in my last fight fold. He he couldn't he couldn't hold it together. I I made him shoot a takedown on me with my boxing, and everybody wanted to critique my boxing and say, "Oh, AJ's a garbage striker. He'll never have boxing." Well, that boxing just saved me in a fight, and that that came from Richard Perez. It's like it's world class. There's 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 no there's no denying that. And when you look at a fight between Masvidal and Nate, it's just like, yeah, Masvidal may be able to do a little bit of of, of damage in the beginning, but Nate is an endurance athlete. He's, he's, he's stamina driven and, and Nick as well. The whole camp is, and it's just like, you can't, you can't, you can't have a BMF title and, and freeze it because the doctor stops it and says, Oh, you know, we can't go anymore. When Nate was, was willing, ready and able to continue. Hmm. Um, so I think that just that aspect alone makes me want to, makes me want to see that fight again. Um, but him against any of the Diaz brothers for the BMF title would, would be dope. True or false, Nick Diaz think? fights in 2020? 
True or false? That's not a true or false question. What do you mean? I'm asking you. you can't ask that. Why? Why is that not a true or false question? <laughs> that's like the definition of a true or false question. That's like that's asking me to predict the future, right? Yeah, I mean, for somebody else. No. Yeah, I I don't know. I know Nick's gonna fight when Nick wants to fight, and um, right now he's focused on business. He's focused on building, building, uh, build up the Nick Diaz army. We just had two off the bat at the beginning of the year and we're coming strong for, for 2020. Um he he's a he's a he's an OG. He's just he's a special dude. Indeed. I think he knows he knows the fight game he knows the fight game better than anybody. He knows when to strike. And uh you know there was a part where he was really interested in that Masvidal fight um to come in and kind of take you know Get it under wraps, but Nathan's Nathan's training and Nathan's getting ready himself. So it's like either one of them can step in. I think Maxwell just needs to worry about being ready himself. He's he's too busy running around and messing around with Jake Paul right now. He's trying to help Jake Paul do a a boxing fight or an MMA fight with with uh with homeboy. And I think that's ridiculous. All right. Well, we shall leave it at that. AJ, congratulations, my man. Great victory, great fight. I do. It was entertaining. I do have news for you. Oh, well, well yeah. We have uh, 30 seconds because Michael Chiesa is standing by. What do you got? Bellator just signed, uh, just just offered me four more fights. Oh. So they signed me on. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Mazel tov. Yeah. New four-fight deal for the Florida boy. Well done, my four man. Four-fight deal is coming. It's going to be big in, in 2020, and, and we're coming strong. All right. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Congrats on the win. All right, there he is, AJ Agazarm. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.